Welcome Kid to Be Fit, I'm Ken. This video is part of the Fit 1-2 workout program. Coming up next, I'm gonna take you through the fit test. This test is designed to establish a baseline and then track your progress over the course of the 90-day program. You should take the test before you start the program at the end of week 4, 8, and 12. You might also want to take some pictures of yourself too so you can visually see how your body's changing over the course of 90 days. Okay, let's get on to the actual test. Make sure that you download the workout guide. Now, it's available at kwfit.com. That guide's got a lot of really good information in it, plus it's got several templates in it. So you, not only can you track your fit test results, but you'll also be able to track your workouts throughout the course of the program and see how well you're progressing. First off, we want to know what your resting heart rate is. Now, you can get that by either using a Fitbit, a heart rate monitor, or something like that. If you don't have access to that type of technology, that's fine. You can just take your pulse either at your wrist or at your neck, and then count how many beats you measure within 15 uh, seconds. Take that times four, and that'll give you your overall beats within a minute. You're going to take that number and write that down at the top of your scorecard for your fit test. After you have your heart rate, you're going to want to take some body measurements. If you have one of those scales that will measure your body fat percentage, that's great. You can put that in here as well. Now, keep in mind that those scales are not 100% accurate, but that number can still give you a gauge because over the course of the program, that number should go down. So if you have the ability to track that, great. Otherwise, don't worry about it. Next up, you're going to want to just weigh yourself. Now, make sure every time you do this fit test that you're wearing the same clothes and you make a note as to whether or not you're wearing your shoes because it'll make a difference. After you have your weight and your optional body fat, you're going to want to take measurements of your waist. The first measurement is going to be right at your belt line. So it's going to be below your belly button where you typically wear your belt. Now, if you're male, your next measurement is going to be right around the love handles, okay? So it's going to be basically where your belly button is. You want to measure around the largest part of your stomach. For females, you're going to measure around your hips. So you're going to come down slightly from your waistline and measure at the largest part of your hips. After that, you're going to want to measure your neck and measure it right below the Adam's apple. Now, make sure that the measuring tape that you're using is nice and loose. You don't want to pull it too tight, obviously, when you're measuring your neck. Next, you're going to measure your biceps. Now, it's pretty common for one bicep to be larger than the other, and actually, that's what we're tracking here in this program. Over the course of 90 days, what you should notice is that your arms should start leveling out so that there's not quite a, as much of a discrepancy between one arm and the other. It's not uncommon for some people to have a half inch or even an inch difference in their bicep, but when you measure your bicep, you're going to want to bring your arm up and make a muscle, make it as big as you possibly can, and get someone to help you and measure it from the, the highest peak of your bicep when you have it flexed. After we do the body measurements, you're going to want to do a warm-up before we get into the physical aspects of the test. Now, we have warm-ups available on our YouTube channel, or you can go to kwfit.com, do one of those warm-ups, and then come back to this for the physical part of the test we have sit and reach. So what you're going to do here is we're going to just measure your flexibility. You're going to take your feet and put them flat up against the wall, keep your knees straight, and lean forward as much as you can and try to touch your fingertips to the wall. Measure the distance between the wall and your fingertips. Now if your fingers can touch the wall, what you're going to do is just bring your hand up like this, like you're telling somebody to stop, and you're going to measure the distance from your palm to the wall instead of your fingertips to the wall. Next, we've got one minute push ups. So, you're going to come down into push up position and you're going to start your timer and you're going to see how many push ups you can do. Now, make sure you come all the way down using good form, all right, and then back up and you're going to count every push up. Now, if you can't do push ups on your toes, that's fine. You can come down here on your knees like this. Just make sure as you come down that your butt is coming down with you, all right? Don't bend over at your waist. I see a lot of people doing this. This is not proper form. So, as you come down, your butt should come down with you. Go as low as you can, then come back up. You're going to do as many push ups as you can. Now, you can take breaks during that minute. So, you can come up, shake out your arms, Gather yourself, catch your breath, and come back down and get back into it and do more push ups. You can also do a hybrid. You might start off on your toes and do as many as you can on your toes, then drop to your knees and see how many you can do on your knees. Just make sure you note on your workout guide or on your, your fit test uh, form how many you did on your knees and how many you did on your toes. Now, if you can't do push ups on your knees yet, that's okay too. You can come to the wall like this and do your push ups this way against the wall. Okay, and the same thing, you can do it a hybrid. You might start off on your knees, see how many you can do. Once you've maxed that out, go to the wall and see how many you can do against the wall. So after that, we got one minute crunches. So I'm gonna go ahead and get down here on my mat. 
in a sit-up position here. My feet are going to be flat on the floor. My knees are bent. I'm going to take my pelvis. I'm going to just tilt it back slightly so that my lower back is making contact with the floor. All right? You should not be able to get your hand between your lower back and the floor when you do these. Now, you can either take your arms and cross them over your chest like this, or you can bring your arms straight up like this, and you're just going to come forward like that, like you're bringing your shoulders into your stomach, and then back down again. That's going to be one rep. So you count one, two, Three, you're going to see how many you can do within a minute. Now, you can take breaks just like with the push-up test. So you might do 10, 15, 20, decide to take a break, and then come back into it. Just over the course of a minute, see how many you can do. As soon as the minute's up, write that down in your scorecard. Next, we have time to wall squats. Now, you're going to need to find yourself a sturdy wall to lean against. And what you're going to do is you're going to come up against the wall and come down into a squat position like this, and your thighs should be parallel to the floor, 90 degree angle here in your knee, and your knee should be right above your ankles, just like that. And you're going to hold this position for as long as you can. You can use a stopwatch on your phone or use a clock with a second hand or whatever, but keep track of that time and see how long you can stay in this position. The moment you come out of it, write down your time, and then the next time you do that, test, you're going to want to try to stay in that position for longer than what you did last time. Our last test is going to be switch kicks. For this test, you're going to see how many kicks you can do within a 30 second time period. You're going to count every kick, whether it's your left leg or right leg, for the course of 30 seconds, and then you're going to write it down. After that, you're immediately going to take your heart rate, and that's going to be your post heart rate number. You're going to wait for a minute and then take your heart rate again. Wait for another minute, take your heart rate again, and then finally, after three minutes, you're going to take your last heart rate measurement. Now, what you're trying to look for here over the course of the 90-day program is to try to get more kicks in within that 30-second period, and you may see that your heart rate actually goes higher post-test, and that's fine. We want to see that heart rate come down a lot quicker, though, the further you get into the program. You're just going to bring your leg up, kick it out, and then the other leg's going to come up and kick it out. Now, when you start this off, you might be kind of slow and controlled, basically what I'm doing here. And if you need to, you can even use the wall to help keep your balance as you're doing these. Just make sure you count every kick. Now, as you progress and you can increase the intensity, you're going to want to get to the point where you have a rhythm going and you're just going as fast as you can trying to get as many kicks in and get that heart rate up. Just make sure you don't lose count of how many kicks you've gotten within that 30 second time frame. Okay, that's it for the fit test. Make sure you've recorded everything into your uh, workout guide and keep that workout guide with you through the course of the entire program. Now, weeks four, weeks eight, and weeks 12, you're going to retake this test and you're going to see how your numbers have compared to your previous numbers on your first fit test. Now, don't get all hung up about weight because I know one of the things that people really look at is their overall body weight. Especially over the course of the first few weeks of this program, you're going to start building more muscle mass. And when you do that, you might actually see an increase in your overall weight. The reason why we take these other measurements is to see how well we're doing in our overall body composition and how, how much healthier we're getting. So we want to focus also on the body measurements around the waist, around the, the hips and the, the love handles, as well as the biceps. And we also want to look at our overall strength. So are you getting more push-ups in? Are you able to do more sit-ups, uh, able to spend more time on the wall squat? So this whole overall test is going to give you a better judge of how well you're progressing versus just looking at your weight. So don't get caught up on what your weight is. All right, that's it. It's time for you to take the test and then get started with the program. Good luck.